intimate. Look at that. Lovely. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a friend. He's very warm. We right didn't now. license that, Josh. You already have a Oh, that's right. Up. And now I'm happy, sad, and confused. There you go. <laughs> happy, sad, and confused. <laughs> we're all very confused, but we're happy that we're. That I was like, what? I was, I was sitting out here going, how are they? How am I hearing myself? So I forgot about this. <laughs> You're I forgot that they placed this on me. These guys have a very busy Broadway schedule. This is your day off. What is wrong with you? Why are you here? You should be in bed. You should be sleeping. We've been no. asking ourselves. Oh, I mean, no. No. We, <laughs> we no. We're excited to be here. Yeah. What we're he said. We're very excited. This is my first time. I've never gotten to do one of these at the 92nd Street Y. So I'm very excited. Same. I I went to I went to Marymount Manhattan College just down the street. Thank you, one person. <laughs> Full disclosure, I did not graduate, but um, I would come and see things here when I was in school, and I, so I'm very excited to actually get to, to be a part of one. Josh, how are you, first of all? Because you gave us all scared the other uh, don't day. Don't be scared, I'm good. I'm good. I, so what happened was I had some lower abdominal pain, I had like sweats, and so my doctors, out of an abundance of caution, were like, that's not a normal thing to experience. <laughs> Go to the hospital. Uh, so I went to the hospital, and I was able to be treated with antibiotics, and I'm fine. And I went back on Broadway on Saturday night, did a show. That's did a show Saturday night, and I feel great. I feel great. Thank Mean you for asking. Meanwhile, this guy, if he gets like a slight little twinge, you are out for the week, right? Yeah, so you are I, I would, yeah I call out all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a miracle if you actually see Andrew in the show. It does like one out of seven. This is, this is actually my understudy here right now. <laughs> I'm not even here. <laughs> so we're going to talk a lot about Gutenberg, a lot about your relationship over the years, because you've worked together a fair amount. Uh -huh. Have you two ever had a real argument? Have you ever been actually pissed off at each we other? We got pissed at each other once. Do you remember? I do, but I don't think we should tell that story. I <laughs> want to. No, no. I don't do think we should tell think that story. Andrew tried to steal my wife from me. <laughs> Oh, that story I'm fine with. Yeah. <laughs> I did no, we, have an affair with his wife. We, we, and we've, we've had we've had a tiff once, no. but it was it's it's no it's. I explain it like if anyone has a sibling. Correct. Josh and I sort of tend to fight like siblings. That is accurate. So we punch each other. If it, if it, we do. <laughs> fight we each like, other. We're two men in our forties who smack each other, and like he burps in my face, and I shove him. That's accurate. And it's really like. <laughs> And no, so if any, if there's ever any like words that are said, it happens and then it goes away. That's accurate. That is accurate. And it really does. We fight like we're brothers. A Andrew and I truly love each other. I think more. Slow down. Well. <laughs> a little imbalance in the relationship, more, perhaps. More, yes. More than. Uh, let me finish. More than. <laughs> more than most enemies love each other. <laughs> You want that frisance of hate. Yes. You want a little bit of. I know. That's, you know. Yes. Can you tell when the other is annoyed? You, you, they must have tells by now. Can you tell like, oh, this annoyed. is, this is underneath my friends. You're really skin. trying to build like a. Yeah. A I was saying that yeah. Andrew backstage. I want to end this friendship end tonight. Um, I can I can tell when Andrew's annoyed. Like right now, he's annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> this is my annoying uh, face. No. I, yeah. I, you have a tell. Oh. I, th I feel, you know what I feel like comes in handy with us is because especially in a situation like with Gutenberg where it's just the two of us on stage. I mean, we have a fantastic band, by the way, three people band on stage with us. But it's really just yes. Oh, they're not um, here. You don't have to no. applaud them. They might be here. <laughs> but it's you know it's the it's the two of us sort of you know doing the show that when we're in rehearsals I feel like we have a good sort of telepathy of we like do. when someone needs a break, when someone needs space, when, so like if Josh senses that like Andrew's getting tired or Andrew's getting cranky, <laughs> he sort of like can step in and like you gotta take care on of my other. behalf, yeah. Yeah. which is really great. That is 100% true. We yeah. always, we always, are, it's usually we, hungry. Well, oh, yes, it's, it's, I'm yes. like, I need a snack. Right? Yeah, uh, which is why the two of us are sharing one small water today. <laughs> no, you have one. Oh, oh great. Okay, okay you go. <laughs> I was like, oh. one of us is gonna have to get that. Sip, sip. <laughs> At least you're on antibiotics, so. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> 
<laughs> we are careening towards opening night, just yes. hours yes. away for Good to yes. Burn the Musical. Thursday. Do you prefer opening nights or closing nights? Uh, my body prefers closing <laughs> nights. Uh, I'm excited about our opening. Me too. Me I think too. it's gonna be really special. Um, th this show, it, it, you know, it took me 10 years to get back to, to do a Broadway show and I had two prerequisites. I wanted to, to do a, I wanted to do something that felt like it was, there's nothing as funny as Book of Mormon, but something that felt like it was a worthy successor to Mormon. And I wanted to do something with Rannells and, and to be here and, and have both of those criteria met is really exciting. And it's been 12 years since my last Broadway opening, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really looking forward to Thursday and, and it's been uh, quite a road to get here. Yeah. I think we have talked about, you know, together this, that the Book of Mormon was such sort of a whirlwind of activity and we were, neither one of us had ever opened a show on Broadway and to open that particular show was very overwhelming and I feel like I know for myself that just all of the activity surrounding that, I didn't really have my feet underneath me at all when that show opened yeah. because it was just a lot of pressure and it was very exciting, but it was also kind of scary. And I was very nervous and I think we were both running on fumes and anxiety by I that was running on Zoloft. Night. <laughs> <laughs> I was on so much prednisone to sing through that show. It was like, and do you feel like you enjoyed it? Were you able to I, like? No, yes, we did enjoy wait, it. No I, or yes? <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely enjoyed it, but I feel like I sometimes was not fully present. Right. I, I agree, um, I agree. Because Andrew I was, so was not nervous. fully present. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like a shark but size. This time, was back behind, yeah. yeah, this time I feel like. <laughs> no, it was, it was yeah. wild. I had a three month old. Yes. I, I was, uh, I, I had, literally turned 30 the day before we opened. Like my, it was yeah. a very, oh, you okay back there? <laughs> um, I, I was, uh, it, it was, it was a whirlwind. And, and you know, we, none of us knew at the time that the show we were doing was going to run for more than three months. Like I think we yeah. were all sort of expecting, I don't know what we were expecting. We sort of just were like, this is a very different show than anyone has seen before. Yeah and it really may not work. Yeah. And so it was a quite a surprise to see just every day this like group of people build. I remember like the first day there were like 10 kids waiting for lottery tickets and by the end of the first week there were like 400 people standing yeah. outside the theater waiting for lottery tickets and you just could tell that something was in the air and Tom Hanks came to like one yeah. of our previews and we were like, okay, well, this, this, is, this, is, yeah. this is not Mamma Mia. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was gonna say, it became one of those shows where everybody had it to was see wild. it. So and it was I'm wild. sure having each other at relatively similar points in your career, yeah. you'd experience some success, but not nothing at that, nothing like that level. No. And you could no. lean on each other at the time and be like, yeah. this is fucking crazy, isn't it? Yeah, and then we got <laughs> to look at each other and be like, what is happening? Like one of my, I, it's a very vivid memory because we, we had very small dressing rooms at the Eugene O'Neill. It's a very old theater and the, and the dressing rooms are very small and our rooms were next to each other. And, and sometimes, you know, if they were like a real big celebrity, they wouldn't wait on the stage. They would just come up to our dressing rooms, which was very jarring. Um, and one day, there's a, after the show, there's a knock on my door and I am changing out of my like Mormon underwear and I open the door and it's Goldie Hawn, Joel Schumacher and Kevin Spacey. <laughs> not, they're not together. <laughs> they are with different groups of people. And then Josh came in my room and the five of us were standing in this very small room and I just remember looking at you and being like, what in the fuck? <laughs> That was what the night you died. Dead. You died yes, that night. It, it, it was pretty surreal. Strange. <laughs> it was yeah. pretty surreal. They, uh, yeah. There was, uh, do you remember when Natalie Portman was, she came backstage, she was pregnant. Oh yeah. And like, it, yeah, it was a, it was a very yeah. wild, uh, it was a wild ride. Uh, it was really special. Uh, to reminisce a little bit more before we get to Gutenberg, we have a, a small clip, which is a, kind oh. of like a, a tiny bit of like a promo at the time and a little bit of your performance oh. at Tony. So oh, I dear. <laughs> I want to refresh everyone's memory about the Great. delight that was. Can Wait, see how my how do, see how my hairline is doing. What do we doing? do? Just, yeah, that's perfect. That's not going to be good for the no, back. No, 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 no. 
Please be careful. All right, let's watch. Here we go. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> My co-star does not age, and it really upsets me. <laughs> Thanks, John. How, ingra <laughs> how ingrained is that show in you right now? If I, if I forked over a million dollars, could you perform Book If of you Mormon forked tonight? over a million dollars, you would lose a million dollars. Because I've had nightmares about this yeah. where like, we had to go back on, and I knew nothing. There's whole sections of the show that I don't remember. No. Yeah. I mean, we. Th I remember us uh, two years ago almost. We did this concert at Carnegie Hall for Bobby Lopez and Kristen Lopez, and we sang a couple songs from from the Book of Mormon, and we were talking about it, and there were whole scenes that we forgot <laughs> that we did. Yeah. We were like, oh yeah, that part. I, for I mean, I forgot the lyrics. I think that night in the song. I mean, I we we did yeah. I we did um, you and me, you and but me mostly, mostly me. me. Yeah, yeah. I did baptize me with Nikki M. James. Yeah, and you did I believe, and it was uh, it's a, it was surreal. But it was also like putting on kind of an old hat. Yeah. Like it it was familiar, and I think like with a week, like it would come back. But but right. definitely would need uh, <laughs> ten days. <laughs> <laughs> So it's been 12 years since okay. your, your runs ended on Book of Mormon. Uh, in those years, um, Andrew, you've done Hedwig, mm -hmm. Hamilton, Falsettos, Boys in the Band, yes. a lot of Broadway time. Yep. As alluded to. And I saw a lot of theater. You attended. <laughs> Are you going to list all the shows I watched during that time? <laughs> I can guarantee you the list is longer. OK. That's fair. It's true. So, it's true. <laughs> was it just look? You've you've been very busy the last dozen years. Yeah. Just not with Broadway. Were you? Were there temptations over the years? Have you guys talked about other? Yeah, shows? We, we we definitely talked. I, there were always temptations. I you know I, I I live in L.A. My my I have a wife and two girls. We they go to school out there, and it's very hard. The 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 idea of relocating was never something that was in the cards, and so. The decision to come back to Broadway for me was always, how do I do it without disrupting my family's lives? And a lot of the shows I was looking at, like I had explored Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum, you know, they wanted me to do for close to a year, and I, sadly I couldn't do it. Um, and we had talked about stuff, but nothing ever felt quite right. And, and then Alex Timbers, our brilliant director, um, called me up one day, and he and I were, were looking at funny thing that happened on the way to the forum to do together. And he goes, look, well, we're sort of putting a pin in form. What, have you ever heard of Gutenberg the musical? And I said, no, uh, I've never heard of that. And he goes, well, I'd love to send you the script, and I'd love to send you the music, and, and t take a listen, see what you think. So I, I, I read the script, I listened to it, and I go, you know, I have some thoughts. This is really funny. I would only ever consider doing this with Andrew Rannells. And he goes, well, funny you should mention that, because I also sent it to Andrew. <laughs> and uh, son of a bitch played us yeah. right into his hands. And, yeah. uh, and Andrew and I were pretty aligned with, like, yeah. we, we saw the potential of what it could be on Broadway. I'm, I guess I'm always skeptical of anything called the musical. <laughs> something, something, the musical yeah. scares me. Yeah. Like, it feels spoofy. And so I was like, well, what, what, you know, what is this? And I, and I said, let's do a reading of it. Let's do it. Uh, so Andrew was kind enough to, to fly to LA with Alex and, and our brilliant writer, Scott and Anthony. And we did a reading. And we all looked at each other at the end of it. And we said, this feels mm. right. And that was March of 2020. And uh, <laughs> they went, and I go, have you guys heard about this virus that's going around? <laughs> And they were like, eh, it's not going to be a big deal. And two days later, the world yeah. shut down and uh, out of sight, out of mind. And then um, about, it was like uh, a little over a year ago, I guess. About a year yeah. ago, Alex called us up and he said, look, I, I, I still am committed to this if you guys are. And we were both sort of like, the idea of it sounds promising, but mm -hmm. it's been a while. Let's get in a room and do it again. Yep. We got in a room. We did it. And it felt great. And it felt great because I didn't have to wear hats and do choreography. <laughs> Once that part came into it, it no longer feels great. 
Um, not metaphorical. Not hats, me yeah. yeah. No, no. Literal. We Andrew and I wear 120 hats in this show. Yeah. And uh, Andrew claims I knew this. I don't remember knowing. I that don't this was know how you didn't know this. I don't read stage directions. <laughs> I don't know how you didn't know this. So, to be clear, the, the whole concept is based the, on these hats. The hats convey, we should t educate the audience on yes. what this is about a little bit. So this is not necessarily the most factually accurate no. telling no. of the inventor of the no, printing press. No, it's the least factually accurate telling <laughs> of the printing press you'll ever see. Yeah. So how would you describe to the unaware what they're walking into? Hamilton you know? without any information. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, Lynn did a lot of research. These, Scott and Anthony did not. Um, this was, so it's two guys, Bud and Doug, who have, have, are big lovers of musical theater, but are sort of new fans of musical theater. So they're just sort of discovering the joys of musical theater for the first time, and they decide they want to take a crack at it. They, they try a couple different shows, which we talk about in the, in the course of Gutenberg, but the one that they really land on is this idea, we're gonna do like a biopic musical about Johann Gutenberg, the inventor of the printing press. <laughs> There's not a lot of information about Johann Gutenberg, <laughs> so then they just start making things up. <laughs> and they create a whole crazy narrative about his life, and they <laughs> add in other characters and love interests, and, and they're very passionate about writing writing this show and telling this story. And what we're trying to do, what Bud and Doug are trying to do is, is do like a backers audition to get funding to take the show to Broadway. So we've taken all of our resources, we've rented a Broadway theater for one night and we are presenting it to the audience, but it's just us. <laughs> it's just the two of us playing all these parts and sort of in their minds, like a Les Mis style show <laughs> with like a huge ensemble and like, but it's just two guys. And there's a turn, there's a turntable. There's turntables. Except, except they couldn't afford an actual turntable, so they just walk Name around the line. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's uh, at the end of the day, what's so, what was so appealing to us was, it's one of the funniest yeah. things either of us had ever read, but where it really sort of has this magical quality to it is it, it has such heart. So by the end of the show, and you know, we, we've done it for three plus weeks now, audiences start tearing up. It's a, it's a pretty magical thing where you can do something that, and Book of Mormon was kind of that way, mm. where you can do something that feels really funny and the audience never stops laughing. But it's, it, at the end of it, you just, you feel for these guys and thematically the show is about dreams. Right. And when you see that we literally invite the audience to dream with us um, w without giving away how, uh, there's, there's a really beautiful ending to the show. And, and it's really nice to see that it lifts everybody's spirits, especially at a time in which it seems like there's a lot of cynicism out there. Yeah. And the, the show is all about pure optimism and joy. Is it joyful to go through it? It's a physically taxing show. I mean, we've already alluded to this. It's yeah. just the two of you. You're running around, you're singing, you're dancing, you're donning many literal hats. <laughs> so can you, in, like in the moment, are you enjoying it? In the moment, yeah. I go, oh, no wonder it took me 12 years to get back to Broadway. <laughs> uh, when I'm done with the moment, I always say the end justifies the means, because right. by the end, seeing the audience, but it's a grueling show. We're, we're sweaty, yeah. we're a mess. What is, what is my favorite part is Watching yeah, this other, guy. Yeah. Like doing it, there was, we had a tough <laughs> audience this week one night and- It was, there was a, uh, there were a smiling audience. <laughs> <laughs> Not a laughing audience. Yeah. It was a room full of smilers. Yeah. Sure. It, was, it was the way you would watch Terms of Endearment. <laughs> um, and so- They were, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so Andrew, <laughs> I was miserable on stage because he handles it better than I do. But I'm like, I'm a needy little pig. I'm like, laugh at me or I don't want to perform for you. And Andrew did that one. Andrew's always says the, the, uh, the glass is half full of the two of us. And at one point, he digs his nails into my back. And it was the physical representation of my anger <laughs> with this audience. And I was like, that's right. I. I he and I are in the same we're boat. Here. And as long as we have each other. We're here together. We're gonna be okay. Yeah. Uh, and we also challenge each other to like, well, I try my best to sort of surprise him. Oh yeah, we always surprise each other. But the funniest is, 
we'll always have this ritual before we go on stage, which I won't reveal because it's our little thing. Um, but, it, it, but it involves seance and calling dead people. Oh, okay. um, no, okay. uh, so <laughs> it's going to be wild articles. <laughs> um, Satanic but, calls it Gutenberg. <laughs> Just a normal blood dance it's right like, yeah, normal. Yeah. But Randall's <laughs> looks at me before we go out, and he goes, whatever you do, don't be angry with them. <laughs> he knew. Don't hate the audience. See me. Don't be like, angry at the uh, audience. Yeah. I should have stayed in the fucking hospital bed. Well, <laughs> while we're talking about negative audience experiences, I always like to hear a horrible uh, audience experience. Over the years in your annals on, on stage, um, what's been the worst? I, my, the one I always think about. What do you got? Michael Shannon and Paul Rudd were in a play. Do you, don't get nauseous, guys. There was somebody that threw up off the Ooh, balcony. No. <laughs> really? That's yeah. the worst theater story I've ever heard, right? <laughs> so, so I've, I've thrown the gauntlet down. Really? What, what do you got? I got well. I, it's not about us, but I, I was to, so early on in the process of the show, I would throw actual jelly beans into the audience. <laughs> And one oh, day, God. and one day, uh, <laughs> I had the entire creative team come up to me and be like, "You can no longer throw jelly beans into the audience." No. And of course, that meant I was going to throw more jelly beans into the <laughs> audience. And I did it the next day. And they go, "You don't understand. The Schuberts are saying you cannot throw jelly beans." And I, I'm like, "There's like actual Schuberts." I thought. It was just like, <laughs> And they're like, well, the, the people, the, the theater people don't want you to throw this. So I go, all right. And I was like, well, I need a reason. And they go, OK, well, the reason is vermin. And I go, oh, well, that makes sense. And, and the, the, the prop guy pulls me aside and he goes, so last year. Joshua. I, <laughs> <laughs> apparently, there was an incident. Okay where Audra McDonald was on stage and a rat fell onto her <laughs> in the middle of a show. We can no longer have that problem at our theater, by the way. You should all come see the show. It's <laughs> been eradicated because I stopped throwing jelly beans, but. There's no jelly beans. But there's no jelly beans, there's no rats. But that was the most horrifying story I've ever. Pretty and I don't know if it's apocryphal, like he said that to me because right. he knew I was very sad to lose real jelly beans. <laughs> but Could be. Did we, have, we had some weird. Well, the one that pops out, this it's not from the Book of Mormon, but when I was in Jersey Boys, which was, you know, sometimes it got a little raucous. <laughs> and it was like, it could this get, it could, it could turn into be a little bit of like a sing-along. So <laughs> there was like at one point in the show, they do, you know, we would sing Sherry, Big Girls Don't Cry, and Walk Like a Man. And it was the they were called the Big Three. It was like their first big three number one hits. So we sang them all in a row, and apparently someone was really going to town. <laughs> was really singing along. So this couple behind this man was like, please be quiet, please be quiet. <laughs> and it escalated to the point where a fist fight broke out <laughs> in the theater, which didn't seem very Broadway to me. It seemed very aggressive. Um, so we had to stop the show because there was a full fist fight and like the police had to come. It Jersey boys. <laughs> I, I was like, settle down. Andrew's Calm got another down. story about Jersey boys that makes me laugh so hard oh. when literally a part of the set fell onto the audience. <laughs> no, well, Josh likes this story because I really showed my true colors. I was, it was, I was on tour with it and there was a, a, a chain link fence, like a huge, it was like the, you know, up to the proscenium. And we were on tour and the fence at one point at the beginning of the second act, we were all singing some Four Seasons song. <laughs> And I'm playing my fake keyboard. And everyone, so my back is to this fence. And all the other boys who have like guitars and stuff are like, oh no. And they, they turn around and they all sort of put their hands up like they're gonna catch something. And I turn around and see that the fence is falling and I just walked off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> because I was like, well, I'm not gonna try to catch that. <laughs> So unfortunately, I you know, was the, the only gay for a season, and I was also <laughs> like, no. I will not be helping with that. But you boys can fix it. <laughs> Just to be crystal clear, the Gutenberg sets are locked down. Oh, locked down. No rats. No, no 
sets. Nothing's falling. No. no, we've had a very Safest solid set. Safest place you can be. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, so uh, again, as mentioned, you play a lot of roles, done a lot of very unique voices in the course of the show. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, there are little girls, there are drunks, etc. Yep. What makes the other laugh? What is the, what's the what's the voice character when you stare at them? You're like, this is gonna be tough. <laughs> oh, Josh, Josh does. I mean, it's just Josh's voice. Um, <laughs> but he does something sometimes to me very deliberately on stage that he knows that makes me laugh. And we've specifically gotten a note from our very kind, very patient director, Alex Timbers. Please do not laugh at this one moment. And he still does it to me. I and it really night. takes all of my. <laughs> I have to think about like all of like uh, every dead relative I have. I'm like, focus, 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 focus. It's literally just. It's my, so stupid, and it's not going to make you laugh. But it's just he knows it makes me laugh, and he does it. Andrew and I both <laughs> play this character named Helvetica, uh, and <laughs> named after the font, and we it's. <laughs> It's so wildly different. Yeah. The way yeah. both of us approach this ridiculous <laughs> character, uh, n neither of which is correct, by the way. And uh, I sort of play her kind of like sweet and as an airhead, and Andrew plays her with this like deep kind of husk, <laughs> and she struggles <laughs> to speak words. <laughs> and every time I'm on stage with him and he's doing this, it's the single stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. And it kills me. Um, but, but pretty much the entire show, we are at risk of, of laughing. It's, it's bad. So, so not only when you guys see Gutenberg the musical do you get Josh and Andrew, there are some guest stars that sometimes we pop do. in mm -hmm. to yeah. the show. You've posted some of these on your social, so I feel like we can show. Yeah, totally. yeah sure. So let's show a couple of photos. Let's yeah, let's down. let's take a look. <laughs> there's there's the wonderful Jonathan Groff. Groff. Yeah, Jonathan Groff. Okay. Yeah. Sort of sort of looking like Jeffrey Dahmer in that photo, but <laughs> he really does. It's yeah. an odd choice. But yeah. Can we show the next one? Uh, Cindy Arrivo. Oh. Lovely. Yes. And uh, noted actor and uh, sometime director. The third one is oh, that's oh JJ, JJ Abrams. Abrams. Yes, our our producer. Yep. That's a good producer to have at your back. Yes. No, it's um, yeah. We definitely have a type. We go. Out. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, it's it's a, it makes the show really fun for us because it's sort of like. You know, the thing about theater is you're, you're, you're doing the same thing every single night with small variations, but usually it feels similar. And so throwing something unexpected like a new energy is always like a fun way to keep us yeah. sort of like, oh, well, what's tonight going to be Yeah, like? what's it going to be? Yeah. yeah. Who decides on the playlist that, of the music that plays before the show? Because it's Alex Timbers. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Billy Joel. All well, Billy it's, Joel. It's all Billy Joel because, you know, we're... Our, it doesn't, by the way, this makes no sense to me because. Tell them. Okay, so it's. <laughs> we play all Billy Joel music. We play two guys from New Jersey. And when I said to Alex, I was like, he was like, you know, you're playing Billy Joel, you're from New Jersey. It was like, I said, well, Billy Joel is from Long Island. <laughs> I was like, shouldn't we be doing Springsteen? And he was like, no. <laughs> And that was, and look, I love Billy Joel. Mm -hmm. It's great. I also love Spring. But by the way, but it tracks with every it's other. It's so strange. Thing in the show. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just, but it is all Billy Joel. Yeah, it's all Billy Joel. Did you have a favorite? Were you? I was a big, I mean, as a teenager, Billy Joel, I was, that was obsessed. It? So it I was so, me by the way, back. I was so excited. I took my girls, nine and 12, to their first concert this year. And I was so excited to share it with them. And it was, it was Billy Joel in LA. And I couldn't wait. I like yeah. played all the music yeah. that was like, and then he's gonna sing this, and he's gonna sing We Didn't Start the Fire. He's gonna sing Piano Man. Within ten minutes of getting there, they both were fast asleep. What? <laughs> and they only woke up for Piano Man. <laughs> and they go, Oh, he's singing it. Okay, we know this one. And I have never been so pissed off. I know. Because, uh, I'm gonna have to so, speak to your daughter. I was yeah. so angry. That's upsetting. But then I, I apologized that I took them, so I took them to Taylor Swift, and that made up for uh, 
that heals me wounds. dragging them yeah. to Billy Joel. But, I but um, I for, for the youths out there that are choosing, if they have to choose between a Taylor Swift concert and Gutenberg the musical, what would you say to them? How, how do you make that choice? <laughs> Um, well, there's less costume changes in offers, <laughs> yeah. but um, tickets are cheaper. There you go. There you go. If tickets you're torn, are cheaper uh, is probably the only good argument. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hear they drop rats compete. on audiences. Yeah, Taylor yeah, Swift. That's yeah, yeah. There's, um, we, we can't compete no. with that. Okay, so we were talking about th these two gentlemen you play are, are, are dreamers. They, so much is riding on this this showcase that they're doing. I'm curious, like, in your own life and career... This water's unmarked. It's just unmarked water. We're not we're not selling a brand here. Well, we're no, they, did to... take, they took a label off. Don't be worried. Well, I want to drink it, but I feel like somebody just, like... No, no, no. <laughs> this came from my faucet at home. This is Josh okay. Horowitz water. totally fine. Yeah. What's the... <laughs> Do you <laughs> I still got Andrew, we're fine. Um, yeah, I was, was, there <laughs> was there a performance on stage, an audition, where it felt like everything was riding on your career, similar to the characters you play yeah. in this? What springs to mind? Do you I have one? one? Yeah, yeah I, no. so I was about two and a half years out of college. I went to Carnegie Mellon. I, um, I was about to give up on acting. I was done because I had been rejected so many times and I was just like, I can't do this anymore. And I had met my then girlfriend, now wife, and so I wanted, I thought it would be the responsible thing to do to go to law school and to, you know, make a living. And I called my mom, who's here. Mom, you in here? Yeah, she's right there. She's right, oh, there she is. There she is. My mom's right there. <laughs> so I called Susan Gadge Hortz up and I said, um, Mom, you're going to be very happy because both of my brothers went to law school. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to apply to law school. And she started getting sad and angry with me. And I was like, what? I was not expecting this response. And she goes, I'm disappointed in you. And I said, why? She goes, because you've spent 15 years dreaming about becoming an actor and only three years trying to live out that dream. And I think that that's a cop out. And I was like, Oh, shit, all right. <laughs> Fierce. Uh, so I, I was up for this audition for a show called the 25th Putnam Annual County Spelling Bee. And, and uh, a buddy of mine had said, you know, there's only one guy who could replace this guy who just won a Tony for this, and that's you. And I, I, had, I, I didn't get into musical theater at my school. I was, I was in the acting program. And when Josh Groban left my class to go become Josh Groban, <laughs> um, the, the two people competing for his spot were me and my college classmate, Rory O'Malley, who we did Book of Mormon. Right, right, right. And uh, thank you. Uh, and also, fuck you, because Rory got that position. <laughs> so uh, Rory uh, got the spot. I didn't. And, and so I, I didn't do musical theater, and I auditioned for Spelling Bee. And I felt like I had everything riding on it. And I went in there and um, I gave, you know, I, I think I, I pretty good audition and uh, I booked the job. And that was all because of my mom. Ah. Can you make us cry too, Andrew? Um. <laughs> Oh. You can use my mom in your example, yeah. too. <laughs> to Josh's mom inspired I was applying you. to law school. <laughs> I called Susan Gadschwartz. <laughs> and... <laughs> um, do, uh... You don't need to, it's okay. You know, the, um, I... Uh, auditioning for musicals in New York, especially, like, when you don't have an agent and you're, like, just starting out, it's like, you go to so many auditions and you're you're going to several a day and you're going to open calls and like and even when I got lucky enough to like get an agent and like even when I had you know had done you know a couple Broadway shows like you're still like hustling all the time to try to get that next so I feel like I kind of got into like the the I remember when it happened I like I went to this uh, audition for this musical <clears throat> that I didn't end up getting but I had this like moment of clarity in the waiting room that I was like, oh, I can only do what I do. And I'm not gonna compete with any of these people and try to sing like that guy or act like this guy. Like, 
I'm just gonna go and do my thing. And if they respond to it, then I'll get the job. And if they don't, like that's, the, that's all I can do. I can't read their mind. I'm just gonna do my version of it. And I went in and I think I was like, you know, sounded fine and was funny and did all this stuff, but I didn't get the job. I'll tell you about this later. Um, <laughs> didn't get the job, but it was, I left, it was the first audition that I ever left and I felt like, oh, I don't feel gross about this. Right. I feel like I did everything I was supposed to do and if I get it, that's great. And if I don't, that's okay, it's not my job. Right. And it just changed the whole way I auditioned for stuff. And it was not long after that that I auditioned for the Book of Mormon and it very much felt the same way that when I got to LA for my final callback to read with Josh, I was like, I can only, I can't compete with these other guys that are here. I'm just gonna like do my thing, and if they respond to it, there we go. And if they don't, um, I got a free trip to West Hollywood <laughs> for 24 hours. Yeah. So, so speaking about like hustling for the next gig, especially early on in your careers, you both have foolishly posted over the years your first headshots. <laughs> Let's take a look. Yep, let's see. Let's, let's see what we got. Let's take a Andrew's let's see what first headshot. There I am. That's me. So, that's a, that is a silk shirt. Yeah. Can you recreate that pose for us? Sure. Is that it's, I was on a stool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's me. That's sweet, Josh. That was, that was so I could do a, um, a production of uh, On Golden Pond at a dinner theater no way. in Omaha, Nebraska. <laughs> I needed a headshot, and that was my headshot. I would have cast you. Thank you. Yeah. Let's Thank move you. on to the heartthrob. on the I -oh! <laughs> Who's that, Smizer? <laughs> Look at you. I don't know why the photographer thought that the bench should get more. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Attention. It is bench heavy. It's I very, would say. It's very bench forward. That yeah. Picture. Um, what is that out of college? Is that in college? That is. Uh, that is right. Post college. Got it. it I think I took that picture. Those on horizontal an, headshots were all. I took the that range. picture on an empty bench in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You really? Can see the snow. Sure. And uh, and the person was a bench photographer. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you could you could put all your friends in. I don't know post. what I just line them up. The opportunities are endless. Yeah. <laughs> I think was what we were trying to uh, get across. Yeah, this was my Mark Ruffalo phase. Oh I don't yeah. Know. It's a good one. It's Leather good. jacket, turtleneck. It's haunting. Bench. Haunting. Lots of. Uh, I was also auditioning for community theater production of On Golden Pond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're really you're it's it's you're saying a lot. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and yet so little. It's, it's nice. It's like, like, you uh, have that posted in your dressing room for inspiration? I feel like uh, I should. I should have a copy of that. We can take it off. We've embarrassed you guys enough. We really, you know, we made a, a choice for Gutenberg that we were not going to use headshots in our playbill. Oh, right. Because they, you know, asked for the playbill to do headshots and Josh and I talked about it and I was like, I don't. I don't, I don't know. Oh God, this is, they told us not to get scared. <laughs> Everything is fine. Okay. It's okay. We're Everything good. is fine. <laughs> um, but anyway, we Thank ended up for using. more of whatever this is. <laughs> we ended up using childhood photos rather than headshots. Because this show's about dreamers, you guys. <laughs> um, I'll leave you my urine sample after. <laughs> Is this it? This is the. This is when it starts. Is this the audience? We're almost there. We're oh, okay. Almost there. All right. I got nervous. <laughs> Why? Are, did you have a bad experience with the audience questions? Yes, always. No. This is gonna be great because this is a smart crowd. Yeah, it's a smart. Crowd. It's a smart, sexy crowd. Uh, a few more of my stupid questions before we get to them. Uh, who among you is more likely to forget a line in the show? I don't know about that. I feel like we're I do it once a night. <laughs> Josh, my friend, I paraphrase everything. I do I, a lot of paraphrasing. You paraphrase. I forget. <laughs> I so we freeze both have... like a deer in headlights. I forget and I cannot recover. There's a horrific incident that happened in Book of Mormon where I. An incident. Uh, literally, I, there was somebody who was a celebrity in one of the first three rows. And they were so obnoxious, and I was so pissed. That I get very angry at audiences. <laughs> and um, and I, I was thinking about, I was preoccupied thinking about that. 
And uh, I somehow came back into my body and forgot where I was in the show. <laughs> and I could, not only did I forget my line, I forgot the human languages. <laughs> And I had ringing in my ears, so it was like tinnitus, where I was like <laughs> And people were screaming the line at me, and I could not hear it. And that was, that was one of the only times we did not get a standing ovation for the Book of Mormon. No, rough, that's That was a rough not one. True. Yeah. Who uh, among you is more, like, more likely to spit in the other's face in the course of the show? Oh, not, just because of On yeah. purpose? No, not on purpose. No. Yeah. <laughs> but the, uh, I don't know, we're not real we're spitters. We're not real expectorators. No? Okay. Yeah, we don't spit okay. too much. <laughs> We've kind of alluded to this, but more likely to improv a line. I noticed in the show I was at, you made a reference to Beetlejuice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the Marjorie Taylor yeah. reaction. Yeah. Lauren Boebert. Lauren Boebert. Oh, sorry. Uh, Lauren Boebert. Yeah, Boebert. Yeah. Boebert. No, they're, they're, we're both pretty, we're, we both, kind of improv a lot when we feel like it. It's it's sort of like, and what's yeah. terrible about it is, is the two of us will derail the show. It really takes like one of us to be responsible custodians and be like, let's get back on task here. <laughs> let's go back uh, but to we it. both yeah. kind of run We've with been it. good lately. We've been good lately. Yeah. We've had a, a good run of one yeah. show. <laughs> one in a row. We really pulled it together. Yeah. Uh, more likely to suffer a wardrobe malfunction? I don't know. I, this was... You, and I'll tell you why you. Why? Because I'm literally sewed to my entire fucking costume. So, All right. they, so they have me in man diapers in this show. So, yes, yes. <laughs> they, I should have, this is an instance where I should have helped you more, and I didn't know, <laughs> had I been at your fitting, I could have assisted. So they said they come up to me one day and they go, Josh, we noticed that you're coming undone a lot. The shirt, the, the shirt, shirt, not mentally. <laughs> and his shirt was coming no, no, untucked. And so they go, we'd like to propose that we fasten your shirt to your underwear. And I was like, is that a thing? Said, yeah, that's a thing. I said, all right, fasten me up. So they fastened me up. And one night, I have to make a number four. <laughs> and I literally could not. There are 10 buttons. And I'm like, oh, God! <laughs> I did not realize how fastened I was yeah. until that night. God so, bless our dresser, Alex Bartlett. He was th right there with He was with there, you. I he said, I you. finally slammed the door open and I said, get me out of this fucking underwear shirt! It's like wearing a jumper. <laughs> no woman wears a jumper with 10 buttons. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, he I gets am. very sorry. angry. <laughs> Josh. They put me in a man diaper. Man. I know, I know, I know, I'm sorry. Compare yourselves with these other famous duos. Who is, for instance, who's Thelma, who's Louise? In the oh. Why are we both dying in this? <laughs> you just spoiled the end of the yeah. movie. Um, I mean, I would say. I think I would be Louise. Yeah, I'm Thelma. Okay, okay. Who's, uh, who's that Bert? was an easy one next. Who's Bert? Who's, Bert? who's Ernie? Oh. oh, oh, that's a good one. Uh, you're more Bert. You think? Yeah. All right, I'll take that. Yeah. You gonna oh. be? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm Ernie. Okay. <laughs> live action. Yeah. We'll do live action. Oh, that's so great. Oh yeah. Yeah. Seems no, weird. that's not gonna work. <laughs> no, we uh, just scrapped it. Matthew Broderick, Nathan Lane. Who's who? Oh wow! Well, that's, that's actually a, that's a good one. That's um, those are very big shoes. Yeah, physically, it's 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 uh, it's easy. <laughs> um, <laughs> physically, this is an easy one. But it was funny because at one point when we were talking about doing shows, we had jokingly said, "What if we do the producers? What if we did a revival of the producers?" Which we would never touch because it's it's no. it's the greatest thing ever, and those two guys are so iconic in it. But we both struggled with it because we thought, in many ways, he actually 
would play the Bialystok role like better, and I'd play the Matthew Broderick role better, and it was a really interesting thing yeah. because we we're like, oh yeah, it's, it's you know physically it makes sense for the other way, but yeah, but not... what what we comedically do feels more right. Yeah, in that sense. Uh, <laughs> a couple more. Who's uh, Schwarzenegger? Who's DeVito? <laughs> Uh, you do the math. <laughs> Our bodies will answer that question for you. <laughs> who's Barbie? Who's Oppenheimer? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, oh, wow. Well, Josh and I, can I, can yeah, I? Please. Okay, so Josh and I saw Oppenheimer together. Has everyone seen Oppenheimer? I don't want to, I don't want to spoil the ending. <laughs> Um, <laughs> the end is a blast. No, no. but... Uh, hey <laughs> no, Josh and I were sitting there and we became the most needy actors ever. That It's a, just a festival of white men, that movie. And anytime a new white oh, yeah, actor right. came on stage, that's Josh right. and I would go... <laughs> He's in this? That's right. How did he get an audition? We really He's did. in this movie? Everyone's in this movie. Like, oh man. like, how many more people? Well, he's in it? <laughs> Hour three, we were still flabbergasted. We were like, how oh, is this possible? Uh, to answer your question. Oh, sorry. To answer your question, I, I, I think to Andrew's all. Barbie, I'm, I'm unfortunately Oppenheimer. <laughs> we can all be Oppenheimer. Uh. <laughs> it's going to be your Valentine's Day card. <laughs> um, we do have some wonderful questions from the audience. Uh, Craig wants to know, uh, first says, hello, uh, I'm in the current North American tour of Book of Mormon. I'll get out. Oh, Craig, congratulations. Uh, Craig. Understudying Elder Price. Amazing. Andrew, any advice? Oh. Um, where is Craig? You raise your... Hi, Craig. Um, it's a, hi. It's a beast of a role, right? Yeah, I would say um, uh, you got to find those moments where other people are singing to tap out. Yeah. Let that ensemble carry you. And remember through. to always support your Cunningham with whatever he needs. <laughs> <laughs> um, good luck to you. Break a leg, bud. Yes. What other Broadway role would you like to see one other star in, a role that you think they'd thrive in? What, what, that, yeah. I mean, I would love to see Josh do Forum, oh. I think. I would love to see him do that. Um, yeah. Andrew said something to me the other day, and I was watching uh, the Wham! documentary, oh. and I honestly now cannot unsee it. And I, I think at some point in all of our lifetimes, uh, you need to play George. Thanks. <laughs> Maybe. That, that Maybe. Huh? Do you have a biopic in mind? Do you have someone you would want to play on the big screen or on stage? Um, the other guy in Wham. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. Um, this is more like a, 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 uh, a merch question. Oh. Riley wants to know, are the drunk number one and number two hats available? Oh, what did oh, I say? Josh what predicted What did I this. say? They did not make those hats, but Josh said we should sell drunk number one. Literally and drunk went up to them two. and said, "You're idiots for not selling." <laughs> drunk number number so two. I believe that is being developed as we speak. But that was Josh called it from the very start. Thank, thank you for having my back, person. <laughs> um, Felicity wants to know what advice would you share with an actor dreaming of getting to Broadway? Hmm. Um, go to law school. Go to yeah, law school. Go to law school. <laughs> Tell your mother you want to no. go to law school. No, you know, uh, here's what I would say. It, a lot of people will tell you it's about luck and it's about being in the right place at the right time. I think all of that is true. But I also think it's about you having nothing else that you want to do as passionately as that. Mm -hmm. Because it requires sacrifice, it requires you know, the ability to deal with a lot of people telling you no. And it requires a lot of 
not self-confidence, but self-reminder that eventually something will happen and you push and you push and you push and you push that boulder up that hill and you believe in yourself more than anybody else will believe in you and eventually somebody will believe in you because they'll see your own belief in yourself. That's that's been my experience. Well and, and you well you you said that with your audition. I think that that's so profound and so accurate because I I had a similar moment where mm. that was like I was so afraid, and then I stopped being afraid, yep. and I started being comfortable in my own skin, and that was sort of that changes was it. everything. Yeah. yeah. Advice that seem that would seem like the the poignant, profound way to end this, but I've got a couple minutes left, so I've got some more silly <laughs> questions for you. The happy, sad, confused, profoundly random questionnaire for you guys. Uh, do either of you collect anything? What do you collect? I collect Andrew Randall's teeth. <laughs> so I have a collection of baby teeth. This is a, this is a real teeth. surprise. Oh. I wanna, Sweet in a way? I want to clone Andrew one day. <laughs> and I want to make him fight my Andrew. Oh. <laughs> and so Isn't that on. sweet, you guys? And so, uh, That's really sweet. Ex-boyfriends. <laughs> No, I wish I did. I wish um, I wish I did have a collection. When I, by the way, when I was a kid, this is true, my mom can attest to this, I used to collect a lot of Disney merchandise. I used to collect Disney memorabilia. I was obsessed with Disney. We, I grew up in Florida. We used to go to Disney World all the time. And I had a giant poster of Aladdin in my room. And the genie uh, was my favorite character ever. And I would constantly tell my mom, I want to do that one day. I want to do what Robin Williams did in this one day. Wow. And that, that's weird, it came full circle. What's, uh, anyone want to reveal the wallpaper on their phone? I feel like that tells something about a human being. Yeah, sure. Family, friends. It. Yeah. Um, mine is, it's the, uh, it's the opening night card that my boyfriend, my boyfriend Tuck Watkins and I met doing Boys in the Band. So it's the card that he gave me for opening night. Aww. Yeah. What if I turned mine around and it was like, just an Apple wallpaper? <laughs> I was gonna say if it was a, if it mine was the same my thing. My two daughters. Oh, so nice. look at us. My babies. Last actor you were mistaken for. Andrew Reynolds. <laughs> well, <laughs> well um, I just, I think I just told you this story that John. Josh and I went to see Parade, <laughs> and this woman next to me would not let it go. She insisted that I was Michael Urey. <laughs> and I'm friends with Michael Urey, and I love Michael Urey. I don't, I don't think that, you know, we don't, we don't really look very similar. And finally, I just had to say to this woman, you just mean another gay person. <laughs> And then she was, and then she realized that it was correct. I, she was like, way, "Oh, I was thinking of that other guy." This happened and to me. Like, uh -huh. This happened to me. But last Josh night. got to witness my like full oh, yeah. meltdown. He, he had a. <laughs> I uh, at last night when we left, someone at the stage door goes, "I love you on, I loved you on SNL," and I was like, "Sweetheart, I've never been on SNL." <laughs> I don't know if it was Bobby Moynihan. It was one of the fat guys. He was like, it's kind of, <laughs> it's, it's one, one of those. Of those it's like, the, yeah. those are the best when it's like anyone's guess. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I get confused like, for Jonah Hill. I, I get confused for Bobby Moynihan. Yeah. I get confused for uh, Andrew Rannells. Yeah. <laughs> What's the worst note a director has ever given you? Oh, I've Strange. got some good ones. I've got yeah. some great ones. What do you got? Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, okay, I got, I got two, I got two good ones. Same, same director, <laughs> and I used to keep them because he wrote them down. The first one was um, uh, quit acting with your hair. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the other one was charming is not a choice. <laughs> and I was like. Okay, and I used to hang on to those, and I was like, and then one day I ripped them up. But yeah, act, quit acting with your hair. I was like, friend, I'm gonna make a career out of this hair. <laughs> so just look out. What do you got, Joshi? Stop using your eyebrows. <laughs> I literally was doing a movie, and, stop using and your the eyebrows. director kept coming up to me and saying, stop using your eyebrows. And I was like, 
I don't know what. Yeah, so I'm just living. We were on like take 10 and I was like. <laughs> <laughs> I can't move. I can't move my face. I didn't face. understand what. That's I was hilarious. like, does he mean get Botox? What is he? Yeah. <laughs> what is the intention of oh this Oh my note? God. So hopefully <clears throat> after this wonderful run, by the way, when does the run extend? Uh, next week. <laughs> <laughs> Through January 28th. January 28th, yes. so get your tickets now while you can. Hopefully it won't be another dozen years before you guys reteam. What's next? Is it, are we doing Waiting for Godot? Love Letters? What do you have in mind? Love, Love Letters sounds, sounds right, because right, we just get to sit. Yeah. <clears throat> just get to um, sit down. I'd like to do something that's one act. <laughs> <laughs> that has no choreography. No choreography. Do you still want to sing, though? No. Okay. <laughs> Maybe no hats. Right. Um, okay. Okay. If we can find the right. Something like that. Yeah. Sounds Sitting fun. down, no yeah. choreography. I know it's a limited amount of plays that <laughs> offer what I'm looking for. I mean, I think it's Love Letters, dude. Yeah. I think it's that's, that, that that's seems in there. Like or just something else we could read. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, catch it while they're willing to be able bodied human yeah. beings, I would say. No, you've, yeah, we're, this we're, is we're it. really. This moving. is my Elton John farewell tour. <laughs> <laughs> What a glorious run it was, though. Uh, congratulations in advance. Uh, their opening night is just days away, guys. Get your tickets truly while you can. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Josh Gad, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much.